estate itself has been in our family for more than 900 years. We came here with the Normans. When I first took over this place, it was all cattle and sheep. And we started rewilding seven years ago. And when I first removed the animals, the first thing that happened was the grass grew and then came the weeds. So we had thistles, ragwort, and we had an explosion. And the first year it was colossal. The second year was worse. The fourth year it began to go down. We had less. And then year six and seven, it sort of became this, which is a huge amount of biodiversity. You have different kinds of grass, wildflowers have appeared. We have ferns that weren't here before. That's what rewilding is, and this is a good example of it. You'll just get pockets of diversity throughout. When you allow this to grow the way it has, the pollinators come, the birds come, they drop uh, seeds from all over the country, and then you have this abundance that we have here. When I first started this, it was a secret. So nobody knew what I was doing. They thought that I was decadent. They thought that I was abandoning the land, that I was making the land worse because they saw briars, they saw weeds, and they saw all this grass and nobody harvesting it. As time went on, we started publicizing what we were doing here. And many people got behind it straight away. Others were skeptical. But as the species returned, many, many people, many of the farmers and saw, saw a benefit. Um, and then there's still some who think that I'm an idiot. While Niffen National Park is located in West County Mayo, it's all state owned. We have yet to finalize the exact area, but we're over 15,000 hectares. A lot of the restoration work that we hope to do is to convert an effing forest from what was a commercial plantation forest over to native woodland. You could class it all as rewilding. And although the park is, recreation is one of the objectives, biodiversity is number one. this site would have been planted from back in the 60s and it would have been planted with two main species Sitka spruce and lodgepole pine they're planted very close together at commercial rates so for a start it's completely dark underneath there's nothing else there and then we have problems where they're planted right up to the rivers we have a lot of pine needles you have the risk of acidification to the fresh water so just generally they're not good for biodiversity or appropriate for where we are This was a Sitka spruce fort stand here. All the way along there, you couldn't see any of this. It was just a, a wall of Sitka. So that's re recently enough been felled and that has been deer fenced now and it's ready to be planted. So that's going to be 100% broadleaf, mainly birch woodland. Where we fell those and try and convert it to native woodland, we will plant birch, rowan, Scots pine, maybe some oak in places, and willow along by the rivers, and alder. Alder would be a big one as well, so they'd be the key species we'd be looking at uh, to get woodland started. And things like birch, they're, they're known as a pioneer species, so they, in time, and we're talking long term here, will Im hopefully improve the soil for other species to come in, such as oak. I love all of the wilding projects that are happening, but I think sometimes they feel a little bit remote to life here in a, what is a really busy part of the city. I mean, it's never quiet here. So I think the excitement of having a little tree nursery here in this part of the city is fantastic.
We set up Pocket Forest during the 2K lockdown in April 2020 when we were really struggling with our neighbourhood and the lack of green space and feeling a real need for that, which I think a lot of people felt at the time. So this will give the size of a pocket for us. We have the garden size, which is six metres square, which is about the size of a parking space. And then the bigger size, which is the community size, is about the size of a tennis court. So the idea was to try and use tiny pockets of land and fill them with a really rich biodiverse ecosystem, which you really get with a forest ecosystem. We set that up with the idea of maybe putting them into gardens, uh, parks, anywhere we can get around the city. We just planted this a few weeks ago and it's just like whoosh. We're trying to recreate a forest floor. So there's logs, there's wood chip, there is Bakashi compost, which has given us tomato plants and really good rich soil. And then a layer of bark mulch on top. This is how much you can fit in such a small space. So all of these, apart from the rogue tomato plants <laughs> and some of these bedding, some of these ground covers, all of these are native trees and shrubs and you can keep them in this small space and get all of this biodiversity happening in your garden if you want to or in a skip on a street everywhere hopefully <laughs> we have a tidy towns network throughout the country there's a sense that public green areas need to be tidy and there's definitely a place for that everybody loves a, a green that they can go and play on you know if they're young families they're wonderful spaces but there's lots of areas around those tidy areas where they can get wild and have trees and have shade if you've got trees in an area the soil underneath them is much better able to to take large quantities of rain much better able to take away you know massive heat waves the benefits are enormous um, and that's before you even think of the well-being ideas of how people feel when they're in these environments which is really happy even if they don't believe they, they just feel really happy right over there we are currently rewilding black bees this is the bee box, made by the people at Bee Conservation Ireland. At the moment we have five, we one day hope to be up to as high as 200. And that's one project that we're doing. We're also working with the Wildlife Hospital, creating uh, a location for animals to be put back into the wild. These are animals that were previously orphaned or injured. Now this is a small pen that we use for the initial stage of reintroducing animals back into the wild. As they get older, the pens get bigger. There's food given every day, and then gradually as they get older, the food comes less. They have to dig and hunt and do things like that, and eventually the door opens and they are out into the woods. We also plant a lot of trees. We've planted 2,500 trees this year, and we hope to be breaking 3,000 next year. And these are all uh, native trees or semi-native trees. So we're trying to do something positive with this, and. Um, Bit by bit, we're doing it. There are huge challenges. Everything we've tried to do here, there's, we're faced with unexpected challenges. I think the original idea was to close the gates and to let nature take over, but that's just impossible. Um, we have to put it on the right course. And a big part of that is Rhododendron Ponticum. If we don't do anything with that, it's just going to take over the whole park. You can see the tubes on the trees. We have to have those because we have a sheep and deer that will destroy the trees straight away if we don't guard them. We have a lot of plans, but we don't actually have a, a, a budget for Wild Neff in any work we do here. We're doing from our own current budget, so we're very limited. I think we're moving in the right direction, definitely, but you know, it's, it's, it's slow. This is just one tool in the arsenal against climate change. And you know what the greatest and most powerful thing I see nowadays is I see everybody wanting to do their little bit. I get messages every day, I get letters from people who are rewilding their bit of garden. They are planting wildflowers, they are recycling, they are doing all these things and these are all the step in the right direction. You know, it's a fantastic thing to see people getting inspired. Thank you.